We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast editing today, Kyle. Doing, doing all right over here, Jared. How are you doing this lovely evening? Uh, it's it, it's fine. It's fine. Nothing. Nothing's broken. Nothing's wrong. I swear. I promise. <laughs> nope. Are start over. Are you, are, are you talking about your microphone again? Uh, it, it hasn't broken yet. So we're we're good so far. <laughs> All right. All right. This is going to be a fun one, Kyle. It's exactly what I was going to say. We we got a fun one here. Uh, I think we I think we had a lot of fun with last week's um, wasteland topic. And I think we got another good one here, and we are titling it "Crazy Championship Claims." Yeah, buddy. Uh, we all, we all know, we all know. Yes, uh, and yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, if UFC twenty seventeen is not on the list, you riot. It, they are. <laughs> Spoiler: they sure They're will. last on the list. Oh, but right. they are on the list, though. But but they are on the list. So, I mean, get your pitchforks ready, I guess. But here's right, the thing. So uh, you know, if anything, though, Austin, if anything, this is actually a pro-UCF episode. Even though I've included them on the list, all this really does is prove that their ridiculous claim is as traditional as in college football is literally anything else. It's more traditional than the bulls. It's more traditional than the polls. It's more traditional than the helmets, stupid national title claims, unjust national title claims is the oldest, most proud tradition in all of college football. So really the only thing UCF did in 2017 was uphold tradition. All right, Kyle. All right, ready was to get started B here. So we're, so we're we're going to talk about we're going to talk about some uh, some titles that shouldn't be that shouldn't count or shouldn't be claimed by certain They're teams. They're dubious. So, They're questionable. Questionable. Uh, so the first ones here, uh, Jared has down 1903. Yeah, yeah. Minnesota and Michigan. And Jared just puts here, should anything before World War II count? Oh, uh, in, in here, he's Min a 1903 Minnesota expert. So <laughs> Okay. In, in, in the notes here, it says, Minnesota did not play undefeated Michigan in 1904, despite the teams being members of the Western Conference. Both teams received acclaim as national champions. For that season. How are you both in the same conference? By the way, you want to talk about dubious nationals, literally older than the Big Ten. Minnesota and Michigan in the Western Conference. Can we just cancel all of Teton's championship claims? Um, most of them, yeah. Um, and gave up a total of 12 points the whole season. They did play that year. They tied. Uh, that not according to my notes. Um, wasn't the Western Conference the granddaddy of the bit? Yes, that yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, uh, Michigan went five and zero. Or excuse me, I'm sorry. That, that's the next one. Uh, let's move on to the next one. 1918. 1918. Uh, we talk a lot about the, our, our COVID year in 2020 and how it kind of messed shit up. And, well, it wasn't the first pandemic season. It wasn't the first pandemic season. The first pandemic season was in 1918, uh, the, Sp the Spanish flu season. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead. Conveniently, you're also a 1918 expert. Fantastic. Um, Pitt claims, so I'm, say, uh, I'm calling out both Pitt and Michigan on this one. Pitt, by the way, people always, and we'll get to Bama, don't worry. People always uh, talk shit on Bama for claiming bad national titles. 
oh my god, Pitt is the king of this. Pitt is the absolute king of this. Pitt claims the national yeah, so, title so, so it, after it, going... Uh, sorry, you had Kyle. You can read it. I was going to say, yeah, Pitt claimed a national title playing five games, going four and one, and losing its final game to... I mean, yeah. let me let me adjust my glasses here to uh, yeah. Cleveland Naval Reserve. Yeah, they they lost their final game of the season to the Cleveland Naval Reserve, but they only lost by one. But they but they fucking lost. <laughs> the Cleveland. Why do we have a Naval Reserve in Cleveland? Is that still there? <laughs> And also claiming it is Michigan, who went 5-0, and oh, but yet only played two conference games, or Illinois went undefeated in conference going 4-0. Oh. Therefore, Michigan's Big Ten title is also disputed uh, yeah. for that 1918 year, too. And there was no formal mechan mechanism. 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 Thank you. <laughs> existed in 1918 to select a national champion. Brush up on my military history. Listen, I know that there's a big lake there, but like, did, I don't feel like having a huge naval it, presence on Lake Erie is necessary unless we're warring with Canada. I was going to say, did we have issues with Canada <laughs> back in 1918? Because like, we're over a hundred years removed from the war of 1812 at that point. Like, I, I don't know. Listen, you can be whatever. Like, all right, be mad at me. You can br you can brush me up on, on military history after the episode. If you want, I will. I mean, like legitimately I'll read, I'll read whatever it is that you, you want to tell me. Um, all right. So speaking of Pittsburgh claiming that 1918 yeah. move forward, Move forward about 16 years. 1934. This might be my favorite. Pittsburgh claiming a national title going 8-1. and one, Going 8-1. and one, Where the champions were crowned, crowned um, for Minnesota and Alabama. Both of them going undefeated 8-0, 10-0. In which Pitt's one loss was to the actual national champion, Minnesota. But yet yeah. they claim. And here's the best part. Why do they claim it? So we are. Uh, so Pittsburgh cites uh, an individual named Park H. Davis as the selector of that national title, which, according to them, allows them to claim it. Uh, Davis was an incredibly renowned uh, college football historian who posted a well-researched column in 19. 33 Spalding football football guide uh, titled outstanding nationwide selection teams that retroactively selected national champions for most years um, from 1933 and before uh, was the modern poll era. What's the modern or was it the modern poll area? No. Well, yes, actually 1934 was the first year of the AP poll. So it's literally 19. That That's why the, that's why the uh, Spalding people basically tried to declare national titles for every year before 1934. That's, that's mm -hmm. why they went about doing this. Um, uh, so they, they claim that uh, it came from this. This is a reliable source and would certainly support Pittsburgh's 1934 national title claim, except for the fact that Park H. Davis died before the 1934 season kicked off. So, uh, Pitt's citation is that they were awarded the national title by this individual who was dead, who never saw the 1934 Pitt football team play one snap. Way to go, Pittsburgh. Speaking of that, uh, with 34 being... 1934 was it, not overrated. Yeah, 34 being the inaugural AP poll. Uh, Minnesota beat 
Alabama 50 to five and a half first place votes. 50 to five, not 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 25, 24, or whatever the case may be. 50 to 50, excuse me, 50 to 5.5 first place votes, which made Minnesota the um, the consensus consensus selectors pick uh, for the national title, but Alabama claims that title. Yeah, that's uh, arguably, and, I, and I'm going to say arguably, because they had some ones in the 20s that they, they, they probably deserve. Bama probably deserved those ones in the 20s. Arguably, so, Alabama's first of many dubious national title claims. Uh, going forward a few years here, 1940 is the next one here, Jared. Uh, Boston College claiming the the Easy title. Claiming the title in 1940, where they finished fifth, going undefeated 10-0. and 0. Uh, see, Let's see here. Uh, Minnesota finishing first, Stanford second, Michigan third, Tennessee fourth. So neither Minnesota nor Michigan played in a postseason bowl game. Stanford defeated number seven Nebraska in the Rose Bowl, while Boston College uh, defeated Clemson in 1913 and they decided to claim a national title as a result. Basically, yeah, Boston College just decided that their game against Tennessee was a national title game. Just on, they, they just made that decision. Uh, 1941, right. Alabama. How 1984 became the most successful year in Alabama football history. The most successful year in Alabama football history. That's saying a lot. Here's how it happened. Uh, I'm pulling this one, by the way, straight from an ESPN article, which I'll I'll put down in the notes. Uh, Wayne Atchison, in the summer of 1984, was in search of a uh, it was in search of unusual statistics for the upcoming season's media guide. Uh, there were a lot of national championship services back in those days. Atchison said, uh, "I suppose it's just uh, occurred to me that I looked at them and quote." This poll here says national titles, or excuse me, national champions. He found five more viable, viable according to him, uh, championships in all, and without asking or considering any ramifications, ramifications, uh, changed the media guide from six national titles to 11. He just, this, this guy just made this decision on his own one off season. And did Bama like see this as a, as an issue and reverse it? No, they just, they just left it. I've decided I'm six foot seven. You know, I, I think so, like six, two, I don't, I don't know if I want to go six, seven. So in 1941, Alabama had two losses ranked yeah. 20th in the AP. Why would they be considered a national champion over Minnesota, who was unbeaten that year? Yeah, um, uh, and he said, and he says here, oh, th th those two losses they were kind of fluky, and besides, <laughs> he explained those wins were against great teams. Kind of, kind of sounds like uh, today's age, Jared. Played against great teams, Tennessee, Georgia, and Tulane which is formerly program at the time. Uh, what's more, Minnesota didn't play in a bowl game that year, and the AP did its final poll at the end of its regular season, and among the four bowls, he thought Alabama's win was the most impressive, beating top 10 Texas A&M. So, he, once again, like Boston College, he just invented a national title game out of nothing and not, retroactively not just, gave Alabama a national title 40-plus years later. My uh, his response to this is, quote, if it was in our uh, if it was in our day, you would have said they had the best team at the end of the season, even though they had two losses, two losses. I cannot speak today. Um, he says, quote, I still stand by it. 
It sounds very similar. It's not a lot of the more things uh the more things change, the more they stay the same, I suppose. Yeah. Uh all right. <laughs> let's let's talk about one of the reasons why some of these polls uh, a lot of nas- a lot of these national titles uh are a bit dubious. And one of the reasons why is that the AP poll kind of sucks. Uh, and no, I mean, they sucked then they suck now. Uh, but so for example, 1956, 1958 and, uh, excuse me. I, I was looking too far down 1950, 51 and 53 Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Maryland are our dubious claims here. In three of four consecutive years, uh, the AP champion lost their f- their final game. Uh, despite this, the AP wouldn't uh, change their rules for over a decade. So, from 1936, which was the first AP poll, to 1964, uh, the AP national championship was declared prior to the bowl season. Uh, this was changed after Alabama... A recurring theme here. Alabama pops up again. Finished the season with 11 wins and one loss um, as the uh, SEC champions with a loss to Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. Alabama still claims 1964 uh, as a championship despite that loss to Notre Dame. It should be noted, whether you're talking about Oklahoma or Tennessee or Maryland or Alabama, that, like, in these cases, the AP poll did. In all seriousness, why does the last game matter more than any other? In this case, it's because it didn't matter at all. The AP basically said the season was over and didn't count the bowl games. So, according to the AP, voters who declared them national title holders, the last game never happened. So, it's not that it should be considered, it shouldn't be considered at all, it's that it wasn't considered at all. So, by the way, if anyone's out there whining and bitching and moaning about, oh, it was better back when bowl games actually counted for something. Well, you can now tell them that prior to 1964, they literally mattered for nothing. Because the title was already handed out. Basically, you know the Heisman's stupid because they handed out before the bowl games? They did that for the national title back then, too. And by the way, to, to go back to your question, Nubis, especially back then, like the further back you go, the more ridiculous the scheduling is, like we get pissy now when like someone plays an FCS team, but my God, go look at some of the schedules from the fifties and they get even worse. The further back you go. Anubis, a new bus. You want me to hit that? You want me to hit that B U S a little bit harder? A new bus. (laughs) All right. uh, Let's, let's move on here. Jared, uh, Talk about Iowa here. 56, 58, and 1960. Neither season, they they never finished number one in AP or coaches poll. So now we have the coaches poll uh, involved. And in those three seasons, they did not go undefeated in any of them. In 56, they defeated Oregon in the Rose Bowl to finish, finish third. In 58, they beat California in the Rose Bowl, finished second. And then in 1960, they did not go to a Rose Bowl, but finished second. You know who did go to the Rose Bowl? Undefeated Minnesota. And yet Iowa still claims. Guys, like, again, we rip on Bama and uh, a couple of these other teams like Pittsburgh for claiming these national titles. Literally all of Iowa's national titles post-World War II, I think they claim a couple older ones that I didn't even bother looking into because, like, anything, man, anything back in the day, they're all dubious. Um, But Iowa literally has no actual national titles, yet they claim something like five. 
<laughs> Kirk Ferris must have been a young spry coach back then. <laughs> uh. Oh, how about how about these next two here, Jared? A pair of SEC teams. What? Uh, never. Fifty-seven Auburn, who at the time were on probation, yeah, for uh for pay-to-play scandal, and was ineligible. Yet they claimed a title. Yep. Uh, they were banned from Kyle, post we, we, play. We literally talked about this on uh, last week's episode when we were declaring who the blue, or excuse me, the red bloods and everyone. So a couple a couple things I'd like to, to go back and amend here. One, we should probably should have included Minnesota as an old blood. Yeah. So I'm just throwing that out there. We probably should have done that. Um, another thing I'd like to... We... We were talking, when was the last time, we asked this question, when was the last time Auburn won a national title prior to Cam Newton? It was a question we asked. You said 1957. Uh-uh. I'm not letting them have 1957. <laughs> uh, they so can't have it. Move, move it. Moving forward from 57 to 65, <laughs> Jared. Uh, 65, you have Alabama here in 65, and you just says, Covered above in Auburn. No, 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 no. Uh, covered above. That's we we already talked about that because of the uh, oh national title, gotcha. the AP thing. I got gotcha. you. I'm okay. sorry. That should say 1964. Uh, That's my fault. 67, 67, uh, Tennessee. Man, I'm seeing a trend of uh, SEC here. Uh, <laughs> 67, Tennessee. Here, uh, you have titled losses outside the SEC do not count. Tennessee lost their first and last games of the year, losing to UCLA and Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. Tennessee went one and two versus ranked teams and was never ranked number one at any point in the season. National titles. <laughs> National champions. Yep. All right. Well. By the way, I just want to say this real quick before we get too far away from the Auburn one. It's literally if Ohio State would have claimed themselves national title holders in 20, uh, 2012 when they were yep. not bowl eligible but went undefeated. Literally the same thing. If Ohio State were to claim themselves national champions that season, literally the same thing Auburn did in 57. They yeah. should have. No, they shouldn't have. We're, we're better no, than they... that. We're no. better than that. Well, except when well, we aren't. <laughs> yeah. So in uh, 1970, Jared? Yeah. Ohio State, Ohio State. Yeah. Recognized as the 1970 national champion by the NFF or the National Football Foundation. Uh, the, N the NFF awarded the title before bowl games at the time where the Buckeyes lost in the Rose Bowl to Stanford. Yeah. Um, basically, the AP and the coaches had, uh, the polls had evolved to wait until after the uh, wait till after the bowls to, to actually reward a national title at that point. Um, yep. But the, the NFF had not. So Ohio State just said, oh, cherry pick this, we're national title holders. Is it the most egregious one on the list? No. Is it still shady? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Is it on so your shirt, Kyle? It is. Uh, <laughs> there we yeah. go. 1970, right here. <laughs> I feel. I think 54 is somewhat sketchy too, if I remember correctly. But we we move forward. We move forward. Uh, 73. Uh, speaking of bowl games that do not count, uh, Alabama finished the season with 11 wins and and one loss. But yet they lost to Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. So having two losses no that was their that was their one loss oh, it's missed. basically the same thing ohio state did in 73 okay i got gotcha. you all right and then in 74 you have oklahoma uh, oklahoma was banned from tv and the postseason uh however uh they were the only undefeated team during that season once again if ohio state had claimed themselves national uh, title holders in 2012. Well, that's what uh, that's what Alabama did, and or excuse me, that's what Oklahoma did in 1974. 
right. And we have. All right. Uh, here, here we go. Here's some juicy shit here. You All know, right, it's a got, good time when we're talking about SMU in the 1980s. Let's go. Yep. 81 and 82 SMU. Um, they were put on probation by the NCAA for recruiting violations and were banned from the postseason. SMU went 10 and 1, not, not undefeated, but they went 10 and 1, didn't appear on any coaches poll, and finished fifth in the AP. But that doesn't matter. SMU claimed it anyway. Yeah. Uh, SMU also claims a national title, by the way, in 1935, um, which was sketchy considering they lost the Rose Bowl. So. Yeah. Yeah. Also sketchy. And and like, okay, so that's two of SMU's three national titles. Sketchy. Kyle, when was their third national title? Uh, uh the, the following year in 82. Yeah. Uh, Penn State, who was number two, defeated Georgia, who was number one in the Sugar Bowl. SMU ended up finishing second in both the co- in the coaches and AP. But it doesn't matter. SMU claimed it anyway. For two good enough national champions. <laughs> that, that, that needs that just needs to be on a shirt. Number two, good enough, good enough for national champions. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the whole thing there was that they tied a game. And because they tied a game, they fell from I'm doing this for memory. They fell from second place, like down to third or fourth place, I forget. Um which basically meant that Penn State and Georgia got to play each other, and SMU didn't because they were undefeated, undefeated. Um, or maybe they had one. One of them had one loss. I forget. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but then they were just uh, they didn't get to play in the one versus two, and then they won their bowl game. So they're just like, screw it, we're national champions. And finally. Oh, and Austin, Austin's not in the room anymore. Uh, 2017, I skipped a few. We could have done more. I still think, I still think Auburn's claim is a national title. It's not, but the thing, it's not, it's not Auburn's fault. It's the NCAA's fault. They had an ineligible player, Cam Newton, on the team, and they knew about it. And they didn't take away their title. Now, again, is that Auburn's fault or is that the NCAA's fault? I don't know. So, but I'm not including it because it is according to the NCAA. It's right there. Uh, but UCF in 2017. Hey, UCF, like, good job on going undefeated and all that. Uh, but it, Ohio State or Alabama played your schedule. They would have been laughed at. Like, it was, I'm sorry. Like, and again, congratulations. It was a great accomplishment. Going undefeated is almost impossible. So, great job. But no. Sorry, guys. But, as I was saying at the beginning of the episode, if you're that mad at UCF for it, don't be. It's literally the oldest tradition in all of college football dating back to at least 1903. Or even, if you want to be conservative about it, and start it at least when the AP, literally the first AP poll, literally the first AP poll had three different teams claim themselves national champions that year. Three separate teams declared themselves national champions despite the fact that we actually had the AP poll now. And what was it I said last week? Uh, there was a stat about on average since uh, since 1908, I think, or 1903, there have been a total of 2.5 national champions a year. <laughs> yeah. I forget the exact statistic, but yeah, uh, there, there's an average of two and a half cha- national champions champions per year in college football (laughs) and that's just that's just fbs yes so yeah again in defense of ucf who does not deserve that national title 
because we have a playoff now, and you weren't in it. Sorry. In defense of UCF, they're just upholding literally the oldest tradition in all of college football. And for that, UCF, we thank you. Because if nothing else matters in college football fandom, it is tradition. And UCF being some fucking <laughs> dubious national title claiming. We're ju- they're just all upholding tradition, everyone. And we should be proud of them. Fair enough. All right. Any other ones, Jared, that you want to talk about? I think oh, uh, there, yeah, I, I left so many on the cutting room floor. Yeah, uh, a, a thousand. Uh, if if I didn't mention one that you think I should have mentioned, uh, comment in the YouTube section. Uh, comment, come to our Discord server. Tell me I'm stupid or that I missed a really good one. Uh, I I want to hear them. I love these. This is fun. I love this. If you if you know of any additional ones, um, I feel like I barely tapped Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh claims to have more national titles than Ohio State, and that's just amazing. So, bring bring them. Uh, if if you got if you got any more, let me know. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner, or do you maybe want to ask? Uh, are there any questions in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag you wanna you wanna pull out? Uh, let's see here. Anything that's related? Um, nothing I can really see that's related, other than just a bunch of bunch of shenanigans in here is there is there a good one that's not related uh let me give me a look why don't you talk about um about a pair of buckeyes who are um moving on to the professional level here jared oh yeah yeah of course uh the nba draft was last week um Malachi Brenham uh, was selected to the San Antonio Spurs, which is a great spot for him. Um, And then, of course, uh... excuse me, you couldn't hold back that yawn. Ah, Sorry about that. Liddell uh, picked 41st overall uh, to the New Orleans Pelicans. So I don't know anything about the Pelicans. I hope that's a good spot for him. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, great to see two Ohio State players selected in the NBA draft. I hope that that helps to, you know, be a thing that they can recruit towards and recruit from and bring in more players. I, I really like Ohio State's freshman recruiting class this year. If they can keep it together, which is always just a huge question in modern college basketball. Can you keep the recruiting class together? Um they, they, it could be the recruiting class that changes things. It really could be, but again, they have to hold it together and they have to develop that talent. So we'll see. Any good questions, Kyle? Uh, any good questions here? <laughs> Define good. So You're I got one to say no. Got one from a new bus. A new bus. A new bus. Uh, should Division One football teams have to be part of a CFP level conference before being allowed to level up? I'm sorry. Say it again. Should Division One football teams have to be part of a CFP level conference? Before being allowed to level up. Uh, so basically the UCF question. Yes. Well, Cincinnati got together the playoffs. They did. Sorry about your luck, UCF. I don't have to tell you. You picked the wrong season to go undefeated. I don't have to tell you. Uh, Too many teams jumping to FBS without being part of a conference. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're you're talking literally about just 
joining the FBS without landing in a, so basically joining the FBS and then just being independents like their Notre Dame or something. It's not a good idea. I'll tell you that much. Um, they should probably have waited until the, the rest of this conference realignment shakes out because we're not done. If you think the Big 12 is going to live in its current state for more than a couple seasons, you're wrong. Um, if you think that the ACC and the Big 10 are going to sit back and let you know, the SEC add Texas and Oklahoma and not at least attempt to respond in some way, you're wrong. So, it, you know, the conference realignment is uh, not over. And I agree. They, I mean, I, here's the thing. I, I don't agree that they should be forced to. The ACC is out of territory. Territory doesn't matter anymore. It matters a little, but only a little. It's fine. Um, but I, I agree with you that they should join a conference before jumping up to the FBS, but I don't think that there should be any rules in place to prevent them from doing it. Um, so it's sort of like a, I agree with you that it's a bad idea, um, but I, I, don't, I don't want to force them through rules to, to join a conference. Um, and of course it, that, that problem will end up fixing itself once, you know, the big three conferences, the big four conferences, cause I'm not including the big 12 in this any longer, the big three or four conferences eventually split off from the NCAA and become a semi-pro football league, which is going to happen. I fully believe 100% that's going to happen. I think it's a matter of when, not if. Speaking of money here. Something totally unrelated that just popped up here. I thought I thought it'd be worth mentioning. Uh, Jaden Rashada, the uh, really talented uh, quarterback that committed to Miami on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, he has already a NIL deal. Already. Oh, that's not sketchy. Multiple sources told on three. That Rashada agreed to an NIL deal with Miami Mega Booster John Ruiz for nine point five million dollars. Yeah, and this is, by the way, this is the NCAA's fault. The NCAA was more worried about trying to prevent NIL from happening than they were in trying to regulate it. So they lost their court case, they lost, and now the floodgates open with NIL. And there's just nothing in place to control it, to regulate it, to do anything about it. Um, and by the way, I, I'm pro-NIL. I just want it to be regulated properly. Um, but the NCAA had no interest in doing that. They were only interested in fighting a losing battle and fighting NIL they were always going to lose. They were always going to lose. But yet they put all of their resources in trying to prevent the inevitable. It is, you know, you, you want to, you want a war analogy Anubis? Is that where we're going with this? Sometimes you got to fall back and reform the line. They held the line. No, no NIL. Then the line was broken and they were fucked. Sometimes you got to fall back and reform. They didn't do that. Nope. How was that? Did I do a good job? Yeah, or right, that. That's it. Yeah, that's it, Jared. That's that's all I got. Okay. Uh you I you know, I actually remembered I actually remembered, Anubis, uh, that you uh requested that we do a uh a song from Dan Auerbach to end the episode. So uh, that's what we're doing tonight. Do you have a specific song you want? One second. I don't know that song. Ha ha! That's a funny joke. So we will be doing Dan Auerbach to end the show. Um, Nubis is going to get us a song. 
which uh, I, I okay, he's typing. He's typing. Everyone chill. Everyone's chill. He's typing. Don't put pressure on him to type faster. Don't do that. That's not nice. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wait for it. Just wait. He's going to get it. No pressure. We got to get out of this place. Uh, it was a long title. And by the way, you really should have capitalized the O in out. <laughs> he didn't. That feels that that feels like a that feels like a mistake. Uh, no, I believe you. I'm just saying that feels like a mistake on his part. I wonder if there's a reason for it. There's some sort of hidden meaning behind it. Would be my guess. That or just Maybe. no one. No, no one was proofreading the CD jacket. As if CD jackets are still a thing. I'm old. So, uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Dan Auerbach doing uh, We Gotta Get Out of This Place.